and welcome into another edition of A Better Way to Food Truck Podcast. I'm your host, Jay McFarland. Today, I want to introduce you to Beth Richardson with Spots Gelato. You'll hear an amazing story of how an experience just tasting gelato for the first time turned into one food truck and then another and then another. And then that turned into brick and mortar stores and even international locations. It's a great story and you'll hear some great advice if you're just now looking to get into the food truck business. A reminder that this podcast is produced and sponsored by Order Up Apps. If you're looking for a better way to food truck, you don't need to look any further than Order Up Apps for your ordering and marketing needs. They are official Square partners. They offer custom branded ordering apps and marketing tools made for food truck owners. You can get your 14 day free trial at orderupapps.com today. All right, Beth, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to learn about your story. Give us an idea of, of your background and how did you end up in the food truck business? Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Um, my husband and I were hobby farmers. And so we had a farm that we were, uh, we had a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. We were okay. feeding like 30 families every summer out of things that we grew in our garden. And um, at some point it became so many families and we were not able to grow everything that we needed to grow to fill the boxes each week. So we reached out to other local farmers and partnered with them to help fill these boxes for our customers. So fast, uh, fast forward a few years, we were still farming, um, but the food truck movement started to become really popular in our right. area in Kentucky. Um, at the same time, we were traveling a lot in the winter and there was a ice cream shop where we went that we just loved um, we would walk down the street almost every night, get ice cream, you know, when we were on vacation. Mm -hmm. And I finally asked the owner, what, why is this ice cream so much better than anything? You know, is it just because we're on vacation or are you doing <laughs> something special here? Yeah. And um, he said, well, it's because it's not ice cream, it's gelato. And okay. I said, well, what in the world is mm. gelato? And his explanation, um, to put it very simply, was that everything was made fresh daily from local ingredients. There are other things that make gelato different, but that was, that was what I heard him tell okay. me. And so immediately the wheels started turning in my head. You know, this is so great. I would love to go home and try and make this out of the local ingredients that we're already sourcing from all of these farmers, you know, mm. to put in our CSA boxes. So we made gelato in our home kitchen and um, we, took it to family events and potlucks and things like that. And one too many people said, you should sell this. Mm. And so we thought, how, how can we get this to the public? And a food truck was the answer. So our first truck was a vintage travel trailer. It was a 1969 Bonanza. Wow. And, um, and that's how I got my husband to buy into this whole thing because he always wanted to redo a vintage trailer. So I said, okay, well, you get to do a vintage trailer and I get to have a food truck. There you go. You know, at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a bargaining chip. Um, <laughs> so needless to say, that went really well. And, um, you know, from that first food truck, we have grown exponentially. And my husband has gotten to build me a whole lot more vintage <laughs> food trucks. <laughs> so he so. fulfilled that dream. But now is it more like work to him than, you know, because well, he got to do it once? Well, he still enjoys doing it, but he doesn't always like the deadlines that, you know, <laughs> that we have to impose to get them done. But yeah. yeah, he does. He does. He enjoys that part of the job for sure. Well, I'm I'm curious about that process. I'm always fascinated when, when people get their first truck. Uh, what was it like? I mean, how did you know what you needed in that truck? How did you know what the code requirements were? And I'm, it, it's funny, people say, well, we built the truck. I'm sure it just wasn't that that simple or that easy. Uh, well, no, it wasn't that easy. And that, well, the first step was to convince my husband that the design I wanted for this truck, what, you know, was would be something that he would want to build because all of our trucks are hot pink 
covered in polka dots. Oh, really? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he wasn't real thrilled about that. But you know, I, I just kept selling him on the idea of you get to redo a trailer. Mm -hmm. So as far as the construction, that was not a problem for him because we've we have redone and flipped a lot of houses over the years. So he's okay. got a, a he's got a pretty good construction background. Um, so that part was easy, but the construction of a vintage travel trailer is quite different than the construction of a house. So, you know, he had to modify the things that he already knew to, to work with a travel trailer. And then the, our most, our most difficult part was plumbing because he's not a licensed plumber. Okay. So, you know, we had to work with a licensed plumber to make sure that we had the sinks and, and the, you know, the water heater and the pump and you know, the tanks that we needed to actually be approved to put this truck on the road, mm. you know. And so that figured heavily into our design of the truck is how are we going to fit? Because we have in Kentucky, we have to have three, a three compartment sink plus a hand washing sink. Okay. And so we're working with a very small space to put four sinks, you know. So um, that was the biggest part. Learn how to uh, how to fit all that in into the space that we have and then figure out how that how we can put the equipment that we need into such a small space. Yeah. And and I'm I'm curious, have things changed since your first truck? Did you nail the layout the first time or did you well, get in there and you thought, oh, we should have done it this way or that way? Well, um, so it, it really worked well. So the way our trucks are set up is we have a window that you order and then you have the space where you're scooping the gelato. And then you have a second window where you pass out. Okay. So that way our, um, our trucks can be used if you're going to a smaller event and you only want to have two staff members on there. You know, you can order and pass out of the same window. Mm -hmm. Or if you're at a bigger event, you can order at that first window and then move your line to the second window Great. to pass out. Yeah. So um, we didn't, we really, you know, I can't take credit for being smart enough to figure that out. That kind of just happened. Mm -hmm. But after that, any truck that we built, we kept that in mind because it's a great way. It yeah. helps us to be able to serve a whole lot more people, you know, if we can use two windows. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So you've, you've built a truck. It's now time to put this into into play. You have this brand new vehicle. It's it's hot pink with polka dots. What do you do? Where do you go? How did you decide what to do and where to go? Well, so we are fortunate here in Kentucky. We have a long summer because so we have a lot of really good festivals and events, mm -hmm. you know, long running festivals and events. And we thought that was the best way for us to start. So we bit the bullet, you know, about four or five months ahead of when we thought the truck was going to be ready. We went on and applied to some of those summer okay. events, you know, and crossed our fingers that we were going to manage <laughs> to pull this together, you know, because um, when you apply, you have to pay the pay the booth rent. Fee right. Up right. Front, you know, so here we are investing more money in this business that's not quite off the ground yet. But, you know, um, that was our way of getting in front of the majority of people in that town where that event was, mm -hmm. you know, it was a good mm -hmm. way for us to get our name out there. And that's how we started was with paid festivals and events. And after our first season, we had so many people asking us if we could come to a private party or do you do weddings or mm. do you do corporate events? And so our second season, we decided that we would branch out into some more of those private kind of events, but we didn't, we didn't have enough capacity on the truck that we had. We only had one truck, so we right. could only be in one place at one time. So we made the decision to build another truck for that second season, which in Kentucky, we were required to have a commissary kitchen to right. produce the the product the way we got around that with the first truck is that we actually made the gelato on that first truck oh, on the truck which, okay yeah which was crazy uh, <laughs> i don't know how we ever accomplished that but we did you know you do what you have to do 
But once we wanted to add a second truck, we were either going to put in, have to put another machine on that second truck or find kitchen space that would work with what we were doing. We made, we own a farm and that's where our offices are for the building, um, for the business. So we made the choice to build a commercial kitchen building on our farm. And so we built a kitchen, built a second truck, Wow! started to grow in that second year. And it, most of what drove that were private events, mm. you know, so, so if you can imagine our truck season is typically 28 weeks long. And during that 28 weeks, we're doing about 175 events. Wow, so that's amazing. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. that, but that has been, um, you know, after we after we built that second truck, he's built a third truck. Now we have eight mobile units. Wow, so, that is a great yeah. story. So you're yeah. you're running a staff now. Are those trucks out on a regular basis with us with an individual well, staff? So we we are not like most. Uh, traditional food, like meal type mm -hmm, trucks. Mm -hmm. We don't go and sit on the street. Right. We don't go to neighborhoods, you know, because that that's not really, um, those are not our people. Uh, we still go to festivals and events and private events. Okay. So, um, but we don't just set up on, on a specific location on the street. You know, a lot of times for we found at lunchtime, people come and they get their lunch meal, but they may not have enough time to hang around and have dessert. Mm, yeah, so that makes sense. that's not a real that's not a real good fit for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we go where people book us and, you know, so. Um, so in addition to the trucks that we have, we found that a lot of people wanted us to come inside for events, too. So we added mini bars. And um, we also have a bicycle and a wagon, hmm. things that, that go indoors and out. So that way we can go to any type of event. We do lots of weddings, lots of corporate stuff, you know. So what type of staff are you running? How many employees do you have at this point? Well, so somewhere along the way, we also added stores to this mix. So you went brick and mortar yeah. as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we did. So um, our so this is where this this already crazy story gets even more <laughs> um, crazy when um, so when we were just doing trucks, we were closed in the winter. So we were open from about mid April through mid October. And we were doing a lot of traveling in the, in the winter time, you know, when we in our off season and we, we would go to Central America. We loved, um, we loved traveling to Nicaragua. Mm. It just so happened we found a house on the Pacific side of Nicaragua in a small beach town that we loved. It had a big front porch. We bought this house as a winter home. And I decided to build a store on that front porch, a gelato oh, really? store. <laughs> yeah. So we redid this house, built the store on the front porch, and um, flew a gelato machine down there and um, opened. That was my first store was in Nicaragua. In Nicaragua it, was your first brick yeah. and mortar. Wow. Well, yeah, because yeah. I thought we're going to be there all winter long. It's yeah. the tourist season. You know, we might as well, we might as well do something with ourselves instead of just <laughs> hanging out, you know, relaxing. Yeah. Who does that, right? I know, right? So, <laughs> so anyway, that was my first store and it was not easy because um, we built it with a whole staff that only spoke Spanish. My Spanish mm. is not nearly as good as I thought it was. You know, and opening a business um, long distance in a foreign country where you really don't, you know, you don't um, have a good grip on how things, things right. are not the same there, That's you right. know, as right. they are here. So, but we were successful despite ourselves, you know, it, it went well. So we decided if we could do it in Nicaragua, we could certainly do it at home. And so uh, that's when we made the decision to go to brick and mortar. So we opened our first brick and mortar stores in um, 2019. We opened two, then we opened one in 2020, and then we went, opened another one here in 2021. So now we're up to eight mobile units and four stores in Kentucky, plus the store in Nicaragua in that's Nicaragua. only open when we're there. Yeah. Wow. So. 
Yeah. So we have grown um, far beyond what we thought. I just thought I was going to have, you know, this little ice cream business where we were making some extra cash on the weekends. And my husband thought he was going to finally get to build a vintage truck. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And here we are. So yeah, here we are. So I'm, so I'm curious, you're cruising along, you know, you're building and you're growing and then all of a sudden, boom, the pandemic hits. Uh, Right. What are your thoughts when this first happens and how did you pivot or did you have to pivot? So in our, um, our truck events mostly stopped you know, to be real honest with you. Yeah. Our, um, so our governor closed the restaurants on the day before St. Patrick's day in 2020. So at that time we, um, you were close to in-person dining and that included us as gelato shops, but we could still do carry out and we could do delivery. Uh, we were fortunate enough that we already had delivery services in place and we are already doing carry out um, on a call in basis. At that point, we we really kicked that into high gear. And we at that time, we had a staff of um, we had a staff of 42, I think. Mm. And we furloughed everybody right at the beginning of the pandemic because we just didn't know what was going to happen. But my husband and I took the two stores that were open and we worked those six days a week from open mm. till close to, to keep it going, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so no one was eating in, but they could come in, place their order and then carry it out. Um, at that time, we also, you know, started working on our own app and, um, you know, that was great because people were really into curbside service. Yes. That was really, you know, so by the end of May, we were pretty much back up and the governor said that people could come in to dine at a very limited amount of, um, uh, of capacity we were able to bring back all of our staff. They all came back. And throughout the summer of 2020, things were much slower than they had been the year before, but we were able to keep our head above water, you know, and and keep everyone employed. We also opened our third location in June of 2020. That had already been in the works since the winter. You know, because you don't just decide, right, you know, the, the, a month ahead of time that you're going <laughs> to yeah. open a store, you know, so that had already been in the works and we actually postponed it about a month to see what was going to happen with the COVID situation. And, um, we just made the, the, um, uh, the determination, um, that it was worth the risk and it has been worth the risk for us. It has been, been great. And so, we still close from Thanksgiving until Valentine's day in our business because I sell ice cream, you know, nobody's right. Nobody's coming to see me anyway. (laughs) So, um, you know, so when the worst of COVID was happening, we were already closed for the winter, you know? So when we opened back up in, in February, things were kind of a slow start. Um, but not much slower than they normally are in the winter, you know? And by about the middle of March, we were back to mostly normal, you know. And right now we have a staff of about 45 that are in the four stores, you know, and and on the trucks. So, you know, cross our fingers. We're going to make it through this. Yeah, we're all crossing our fingers and and watching Mm -hmm. what's going on. So you've built this gelato empire. What is (laughs) (laughs) what is uh, next for you as you you project forward? Is it more brick and mortar? What are you thinking? Well, I think that um, I I, who knows what's going to happen. You know, um, we always keep our eye open. Our Our model is um, kind of for our brick and mortar stores. We like small towns, small Main Street Mm. America kind Mm -hmm. of towns. All of our stores are located kind of in historic buildings in downtown areas. So I've always got my eye open for that next great small town 
that fits in with what we've already got going on? Can I get product delivered to that store? Right. Can I actually service that store? You know, so it's got to kind of be in an area that we already have things happening, you know? Yeah. And so I won't rule out another store, but it's got to be right, you know, because it gets one store's hard. Two stores is harder. Mm-hmm. Three, you know, it's your problems just magnifying as you start to add staff, yeah. then there's more people to manage and more hiring. And, you know, it just, uh, your, your problems, they just get, uh, there's many more problems yeah. the more you grow, you know? Right. right. So, so we've got to really look at, can we actually handle and can we service another location before mm-hmm. we, before we take that plunge? You want to do it right, not just do it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So Mm -hmm. how do you spend your days now compared to those early days on the truck? Oh, well, so, um, well, it depends on the week, really. Um, We still, we make all of our gelato ourselves. So, you know, um, our production has increased greatly trying to service for stores and and all of these extra events. So a lot of my time now is spent in the office trying to manage the production, Mm -hmm. you know, ordering, making sure that we've, we've got all of the events managed, you know, that we can, that we've got it staffed. We've got the, the flavors we need to get sent, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but, occasionally at least a couple times a week i'm actually on the truck which is my favorite part still oh, really? about this yeah i i love when people come up to the window and you hand them something and they take that first bite and they love it mm. i mean there's not there's no other feeling like that you know it right. makes it all all this craziness worth it you know and so i still love to get on the truck and and be able to experience that or go work in the store you know take a shift with some of the employees and so that i get to get the feedback from the people that are actually buying the the product that we're making you know yeah i think that's really smart to constantly find ways to have that customer interaction and interaction with the frontline employees so you really know what's going on mm mm-hmm. mhm yeah. Um, most of our employees are high school and college age kids. Mm-hmm. So it's very fluid around here. Everybody's always coming back from school or going to school or, you know, we've got a lot of student athletes. So, you know, this one's now not working very much because they have have games with their sport they participate in. So, you know, we've always got a group of employees that are very seasoned you yeah. know, but then we always have new ones that we're adding to the mix. So, <laughs> you know, that's, that's a blessing and a curse. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it keeps things fresh for mm-hmm. sure. You mm-hmm. know, um, Absolutely. and it also makes it so that we do have to, um, that we are very hands on with the employees that we're, we're bringing in, you know, cause there's always somebody new that needs to learn learn yeah. the ropes, you know? Yeah. Are you having any hiring issues uh, like we're seeing across the country? Um, a little bit. Our application rate is down somewhat, but the folks that are applying to work for me are not the same as those that maybe are working in the regular restaurant industry. Okay. You know, I've got high school kids mm-hmm. and college kids and no one is, no one's working in my stores to try and make a, a, a living, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. they're working for extra spending money. So, you know, even though our applications are down some, it's not nearly as extreme as it is throughout the rest of the restaurant industry, you right. know, because my, yeah. my employees are somewhat different than, than in the rest of the restaurant mm-hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, looking back, if you, if you see somebody who's thinking about getting into a food truck or just now starting this process, any, any words of wisdom or advice for them as they start this journey that you've been on now for a while? Um, well, really, um, two things and they're, they're related. You've got to not just have a good product that was, that people want to eat. You've got to be, um, you've got to be smart about business, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you've got to 
think one step ahead where think big, I guess, you know, and where would you like to see this go and plan for that from the very beginning. And I would also say, I say this all the time, count your, count your own pennies. And what I mean by that is you need to watch your expenses. You know, how much is it going to cost for you to build this truck? How much is it going to cost for you to staff it? How much money do you have in your food costs? And mm -hmm. put it together so that you see where you need to do that so that you can see where you can cut costs if you can. Um, and you actually know if you're making any money or not, you know, yeah. um, it's all, it's uh, so easy at the end of the day to say, wow, I've made this much cash today, but really how much have you made, mm -hmm. you know, how much expense went into. And I think that's, that's one of the main things that, um, that a food truck or restaurant operator needs to, needs to know, you know, account for every, every dime that you're spending so that you know actually how much you're making on your product. Yeah, I think that's great feedback. You had mentioned at one point that you were working on an app and I know that you're using order up apps now. Did you transition <laughs> from one to the other or are you using both? Um, we're, we, we had another curbside app um, but it was not an, an app for, it was not an app on the app store with Spots Gelato's name on it, mm, you know? Okay. Um, it was just a curbside, it was a service that, um, that handled curbside orders for us. It was fine, but there was no way for us to personalize our experience. No way mm. for us to, um, to put our branding on the app. There was no way for us to easily change our flavors, which change every week, change our menu items that change every month, you know? So we wanted something that was much more, um, that we could personalize to our gelato business. And so the app that we went with, the order, order app, it is perfect, you know, even, me with very few computer skills. I can manage to change my flavors. I can change my menu items. You know, it has been a godsend for us. Now we don't use it like a lot of food trucks do. I think a lot of food trucks use it to let everybody know where they're parking for the right. day. And then, you know, taking pre-orders from, you know, their truck location. We use it as a curbside app for our our standalone brick and mortar location. Oh, for your brick and mortar, and it, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we do not use it on the truck. If mm. you want to order for, from us on the truck, you stand in line, you order at the oh, window, okay. we get it for you then. Yeah, but the nature of our product, you know. Yeah, it's not um, a pre-order product. You can't have gelato right. sitting there waiting waiting for something. Right, yeah. right, but it does work in a curbside setting for us, and so that's how we use it, and it's just been a godsend. It's been great. That is great to hear. One last question. Mm -hmm. Is there a favorite flavor for everybody? Is, oh gosh. What? Um, well, yeah. So my favorite flavor is whatever's new this week. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, and so we change our, our stores have 10 flavors each week and four of those rotate every week. So we do a lot of in and out at the stores, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but, um, but are by far at, Across the board, stores, trucks, private events, whatever, cookies and cream is always our best seller. Okay. Yeah. Um, but a close second is our banana pudding. It's, mm. you know, it's kind of a Southern thing, but it's based from off my mother's banana pudding recipe. And so people just love it. It sounds really good. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to get out there and try some. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd love to have you. Well, Beth, it's been a real pleasure getting to know you. Thank you so much for sharing your story and congratulations on your great success. Well, thank you. It's been great to talk with you. Well, I certainly want to thank Beth for spending some time with us today and sharing their amazing story from going from one food truck trailer to this gelato empire. I hope there was a lot of great information for you if you're looking to get into the food truck business or you're currently an operator and you're looking for ways to expand. They've done some great things, and I really hope that there was some something in there for you. A reminder that this podcast is produced and sponsored by Order Up Apps. If you're looking for a better way to food truck, as you heard from Beth, you don't have to look any further than Order Up Apps. 
for your ordering and marketing needs. They are official Square partners and they offer custom branded ordering apps and marketing tools made just for you, food truck operators or brick and mortar, possibly, if you're in the gelato business in Kentucky. Get your 14 day free trial at orderupapps.com today. My name is Jay McFarland. This has been a better way to food truck podcast. Join us next time for another interview with a great food truck operator.